you know why trucking is good for people who like to A, save money, B, invest, and it's just a good fundraising career overall? Well, I'm going to tell you why today on the Truck Pram channel. This is Trucker Brown. I'm Trucker Brown. If you're new to me, it's just you sub. I do general conversation about trucking, general conversation about sometimes money, lifestyle, or just generally rant about anything I want. Um, today, we're going to talk about if you're into saving money and investing, why trucking is one of the perfect jobs for you. Uh, one of the reasons is that you can get rid of all annual bills that usually hinder um, someone who is working a regular nine to five job. So if you were just to to think about it, you know, you're out here. You don't have to pay rent. You don't have to pay a car note. You don't have to pay a phone bill, cable bill, septic bill, water bill. You know, you don't have to have a car at all. You don't have to have any of these things. You could just scrap all of them and keep the money in your pocket and put it somewhere else if you're a, um, you know, particularly advanced investor. Um I've known people who came out here and, and grown amazing portfolios because they don't have the, 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 the annual bills. And that's the, the biggest draw of most of your money for someone who's, who's home is annual bills. If we were to go for what the, uh, let's look up the national average for a, for rent. Let's look that up now. All right, the national average for rent, according to Rent Cafe is, somewhere around $1,470. So between twelve dollars and $1,470. And it is raised in the past three years. It, oh, and raised in the past year, it's raised 3.2%. That's the natural average for rent if you want to live, I guess, in a decent neighborhood. That's what people are, uh, people are paying. Now, if you were to take that number, and just say, you know what, I'm gonna scrap, I'm gonna scrap that cost. How much would you put in your pocket to save and or invest? So if you, where are we at? Uh, that's $17,712 you can put in your pocket if you were to just not have an apartment. And then, you know, how could I live that way? You could take that money uh, that was $17,000 in a year and you can put it towards something you may want to invest in, something you're into. I don't know what you're into. You could be into Forex. You could be into stocks. You could be into whatever. You know, I'm no investment guru, guru or to tell you what to invest in. It's just the money's there. If you go for that driver for a car, car note, that's about five grand, six grand a year. Add that to the 1700 How much is a light bill average? Add that, you just add it up. You probably could pull somewhere around $24,000 in investment power just in not having those things. And how can you do that and live at the same time? Drive a truck. Now, this is if you're interested in trucking, because if you're not really interested in trucking, just don't do it, because you're just going to be one of those guys out here that we hate because you suck at what you do and you're mad at the world. But it, it, you are in a unique situation to where if you have the, the mind, you just say, screw it. I'm going to do three years and I'm going to give it all this stuff and I'm going to build an investment portfolio maybe or build or get some real estate or, or, or really a lot of that stuff won't even be able to be touched on that because a lot of us have a bad debt and, and a, a, a lot of debt that we want to knock down so you can say hmm I'm going to do three years and I owe $30,000 in credit card payments I'm going to do two years and knock that out this is available for you you can do that you, can, uh, you may have student loans you want to knock out you may have child support you may have Anything, the whole full sprint bill from 03. You can knock those out real quick just by saying, I'm just going to do OTR for two years and, and skimp the rent stuff and pay my stuff off. I personally have done this. I had 27 bad judgments at a 400 credit score, and I, in a year and a half, two years, I paid a total of 30 something thousand dollars off in bad debt from the mistakes as a younger man. It, it works. Get rid of it. This is an option. You're not closed in. You have the choice to. Come out here and, and do anything that you want. That's just one thing I want you to understand why trucking is awesome for someone who is trying to A, change their life, B, save money, or invest, or all three. All three. 
it's up to you what you do with your money and what you choose to buy and what you choose to get. Just think out of the box a little bit. Just think out of the box and think, hmm, just because I'm making more money doesn't mean I need a more expensive stuff or I need a couple cars or I need, you know, a couple girlfriends or whatever you're blowing your money on. That's a deep thought that you have to think you need to sit down and figure that out because you're out here and you're in the opportunity where you can have no bills, none. And you can fix everything that's supposedly wrong with your situation right now. The only reason that it will not be done is if you choose not to do it. If you choose not to do that and you say, hmm, you know, I'm just going to floss with the money and not pay off the bad debt that I have. That's a decision you made. I'm not going to not sock no money away for a rainy day. It's up to you. Now, there's many ways you can do this. I've told you with the automatic drafts, you can do it that way, or you can just, you know, there's many ways you can do it and, and consult someone who is an expert in doing it, but the opportunity is there. Now, someone is going to be at the bottom and say, hey, man, well, you know, I have kids, TV. I don't really have any, um, you know, have any real advice for that. You have kids, bro. Like, it is what it is. That's your responsibility. So you're going to have to shave off... Uh, points in different areas but even though you have kids you really got to ask yourself some real good strong questions of what is a need and what is a want right so you could say you know i have kids i had to get that yukon denali to carry my kids around no you didn't no no you did that that no you did not okay many ways why this is uh, can be considered not the best choice in the world well, a Yukon Denali is not as good on gas as an actual minivan. That's why minivans are for carrying a lot of people around. They're better on fuel. They're geared at the working family household. So they're usually cheaper than a luxury SUV. So you're looking at the, the sheer cost difference right there. If you just look up a minivan and look up a, new, a Yukon Denali, what's the cost difference there? You know, uh, this six cylinder or four cylinder engine in this minivan is probably getting 26 to 30 something miles a gallon. And what is what is a uh, Denali get it? unless you have like a hybrid or something because they have those out. But uh, what 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 is an average V8 Denali getting that you're burning every week? The difference is you got to let go of the materialism thought process and say, I don't really care about. If the car does what it needs to do, it gets my kids back and forth to school, A to B to Z, AC and heat and safe. That's all I care about. I'm going to get this vehicle to do that right there. Or is some of that glamour or, or you wanted to flash out or it's just or I just wanted it? Well, you got to pay for things that you want. So you went and got a Denali. Maybe your payment six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month. And someone who went and got a two, three year old, you know, minivan maybe he's only paying two three four hundred a month you do the savings between three four hundred to six eight hundred there you go right there they're only putting gas in it once a week to get the cool kids back and forth to school and the denali you probably gas it up twice you know if that tire pops does the denali tire cost more than the minivan tire does the denali repair cost more than the minivan repair you see what I mean? Like, these are the little things that you can be like, I'm going to shave off as much money as possible. I don't need certain things. Do you need cable? That's a real question because really, no one really watches cable anymore. People watch this. This is just an app on the phone and an app that's in most smart TVs. A YouTube app is inside of it. Maybe you just say, you know what? I'm going to scrap cable and just have internet and see how much that saves. There's many ways you could, just because you have a family doesn't mean you're out of the conversation for saving your money, bro. You know, if you wanted to go get something fancy, you got to pay for it. Like, that's that's part of it. You can't say, oh, well, I can't do that because I have kids and you don't. Well, I mean, you can save money with kids. People do it all the time. You just have to make the decision as an adult is, you know, maybe it's raining. Maybe I don't need these things that I, that I think I want. I don't need them. I, I don't I don't need a fancy car, you know. Well, you, you know that some dudes, when they get to a certain age, they just stop caring about whatever they drive. That old guy that just pulls up in the, you know, 93 Toyota <laughs> uh, regular cab truck that's a five-speed, a four-cylinder, and, and he let he made that last for 15, 20 years. And you think back to your situation, you bought a new car every four years for the past 15, 20 years. Who's winning? A lot of his perspective. 
You know, a lot of people don't know that those little Toyota pickup trucks and Nissan pickup trucks, those Rangers, they get 30 miles a gallon, have excellent repair records, gets you from A point B to point, point B to point A. They can carry stuff. You know, you can haul stuff for the house with it. Something uh, somebody told me before that no man that owns a house No man that owns a house should be without a pickup truck. I don't know if that's true. I've never owned a house. Y'all comment at the bottom if that's a true statement. But uh, a wise man told me that. No man without a house. No man with a house should not have a pickup truck. They should have a pickup truck. Every man with a house should have a pickup truck. It don't have to be a new one. It don't have to be the main thing you drive every day, but you should at least have one or access to one. Now, if you decide to go, you know, get a Lexus sedan because it helps you with your philandering, that's a choice you made. And now you have to pay all the premiums that come with having a premium sedan like that, like premium gas, premium oil, premium tires. A lot of these cars come with racing tires on them. Like, you, you, that, that's not a big deal to you until you had it for a year and a half and you have to replace one of those Como or Coho tires. And you're like, alright, I'm going to go here and pay my 165 and it's $309. Plus mounting, you five hundred dollar day to switch a tire. You're like, why? Why is it so expensive? You don't even think that those are three hundred wide racing tires on that that car. Maybe you don't need that. You could have just had the minivan <laughs> and the pickup truck and been fine. But you're worrying about flossing before bossing, which is one of the main things going on in uh, our materialist society. So it's up to you. I, you know, it's, if you wanted to save money, all you have to do is start to not care about material things. That's it. Now, I am not oblivious to the fact that people are going to be like, well, didn't you do a video saying how you blew your money? I did a video showing you how I blew some money. I am not broke. (laughs) Some money. Before I spend a dime, my automatic drafts are done. They come out every Friday, bro. All the four saving points that I have, where you consider an investment, high yield account, Roth, whatever, are just regular savings. Those hit before I can even get my check. So what's left, I have a choice to blow it or not. But even through all that blowing money, my accounts are still like, they're still going up. That's something you need to understand about your finances before you uh, start spending money is, you know, I have savings on an automatic because I don't want to think that dude, I put that money there. It's coming regardless. If you make money that week, your bank automatic drafts don't care if you make money that week. It's taking it every Friday. 250 or 100 or whatever you said that. And it's just a way to keep you honest, man, where it's like, you know, I'm going to save $100 a week. All right, call your bank and say, I want to set up an automatic draft to a Roth or an account I can't touch for a hundred bucks a week and it will come out every week. Now, if you said, oh, I'm just going to do it myself. So if something happened, I don't got to send it. Eh, you're probably not going to do it. See you know what I mean? So it, it's, it's, it's really up to you. It's really up to you. Me personally, I leave it on there. I don't, I forget it's going on half the time until I open my app and see, oh, wow, six grand or whatever it went up to, you know, or I get a dividend from that account. You see what I mean? So it's one of those things where you have to take the, we're adults. We're adults. No one forces you to save your money or forces you to pay off your debt. That is your decision. That is your responsibility. And no one that you work for, friend of, or or you're screwing is, has the responsibility of telling you what to do with your money. You do. You're the boss, man. All right. Everybody's a boss, right? Well, take the boss move and Take care of your affairs, handle your business. No one told you not to get life insurance. No one told you not to get, you know, the CDs or whatever you could possibly put your money in. That is your choice. And you're in the unique position in this country doing this job to where you can do it. And you can do it, excuse the TI word, expeditiously. You can do it expeditiously. You can say, you know what, I'm tired of this car. No, I'm going to pay $2,000 a month on this car get rid of it. I don't even want to know. I'm just going to pay that. Now, I'm not saying that's a good idea to do or a bad idea to do. I'm just saying you have the option. This credit card, I'm done with it. I'm just going to drop a thousand on it every week. I want it gone. You know what? I'm just, um, I, 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 I BS around. 
and I'm going to put 450, 600, 700 a week into to my uh, Roth if I want to. It's up to you. You can do it. You can move your money around any way you want. Look at your finances and figure it out. Because you're in a job where you can get rid of all possessions and don't owe nobody nothing. It's just something to think about. As they say, as they don't read Rainbow, don't take my word for it. <laughs> it's up to you. Welcome to Trucker Brown Channel. This channel is for you to do better. It's for you to think about things you maybe have not think of. Thought-provoking conversation. I want you to do better. I want you to be ahead of the game when it comes to talking to people. Or it comes to, to decisions that you've made. Because a lot of you watching this barely in your 20s. You're probably just waiting for that $1,000 check. You're not thinking this far. But remember, there will come a time where either you're tired of doing this or your body will tell you, you're not doing this no more. Then what? Don't do drugs. It's Trunker Brown. And go to my Instagram, which is at Trunker Brown.